Hello, this is teacher Alex from Phuket Pulse. Welcome to the next GED Life Science screencast on life functions and energy intake. The topic of this lesson is cellular respiration. If you find this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below. It allows us to help more people like you. First, a quick overview. We will talk about cellular respiration in general. We will learn what ATP is. We will compare aerobic and anaerobic respiration. We will see what respiration actually is in detail and we will compare photosynthesis and respiration. So let's start with the definition again. Cellular respiration is a biochemical process that converts the chemical energy stored in glucose to usable energy in the form of ATP to maintain life processes in cells. So what does that mean? Again, we see the word convert. So we have a change of chemical energy that, as we know, is stored in glucose. And this chemical energy from glucose is changed into a more usable form of ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy currency of our cells. It's the money that cells can spend on any process that requires energy, basically. Here we see an ATP molecule. As the name says, it has a triphosphate, three phosphate groups attached to another molecule part. Whenever a bond is broken between two phosphates, it releases a small amount of energy that the cell is able to use for any process it needs the energy for. As a result, we get ADP, which doesn't contain a lot of energy anymore, and a free phosphate group. This ADP and the free phosphate group can be recycled in respiration to produce ATP again. And ATP can again be used for any process in the cell that requires energy. Let's have a closer look at aerobic respiration. Aerobic stands for the use of oxygen. Oxygen is involved in that process. And that is the form of respiration we come most frequently across in the life science. Aerobic respiration is the breakdown of glucose with the help of oxygen to release energy and produce carbon dioxide and water. The aerobic respiration happens at our mitochondria in our cells. Now, these are small organelles which we often refer to as the powerhouses of our cells. Why? Because this is where respiration happens and energy is released from glucose. Let's have a look at the word and symbol equation again for aerobic respiration. Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water and free energy available for the cell. Or the symbol equation. Now here, glucose again plus six oxygen molecules gives us six carbon dioxide and six water plus a couple of molecules of ATP that the cell now can use for any process that requires energy. When there is aerobic respiration, there must be anaerobic respiration as well. Anaerobic means without oxygen. That means anaerobic respiration is the breakdown of glucose without oxygen to release energy. Here, much less energy is released compared to aerobic respiration. There are two types of anaerobic respiration that we will discuss today, lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation, for example, takes place in our muscles during heart exercise. If not enough oxygen can be provided to the muscle, the muscle still needs to move, so it needs another energy resource, and it switches to lactic acid fermentation that doesn't require oxygen. As a result, Lactic acid is produced, which gives us sore muscles during and after the exercise. We see that lactic acid is still a big molecule and it still contains quite a lot of energy. So the body shouldn't waste that molecule. What the body does, it transfers the lactate or the lactic acid into the blood, brings it to the liver, where a process called gluconeogenesis happens. In this process, our two lactic acid molecules 
are combined to form glucose again, which requires a little bit of energy. And glucose then can be used in aerobic respiration to release a much greater amount of energy. Another form is alcoholic fermentation. In this case, glucose is broken down into ethanol and carbon dioxide. This process is done by yeast, one of the most famous molds of fungi, Saccharomyces. Now, yeast does fermentation and has several biotechnological applications, for example, making beer, making wine, and for making bread. Other organisms that do lactic acid fermentation, like Lactobacillus or Aspergillus, are used to produce soy sauce, cheese, and yogurt. Now let's have a look at respiration in more detail. Glucose enters our cells and is then first broken down into two smaller molecules called pyruviate. This process is called glycolysis and releases a small amount of ATP and energy. Then, usually the pyruviate, if oxygen is present, for aerobic respiration goes into the mitochondria. Here aerobic respiration happens and a lot of ATP is produced and released. The pyruviate that comes from glucose is then in that process slowly broken down into carbon dioxide and water. Many, many, many <clears throat> step by step chemical reactions in the citric acid cycle. The products of these reactions, of byproducts, are then used to release and make the ATP. Just want to show you this to have a quick look at how complex it can get. Again, it is not just a simple one step reaction that happens in our body. Many, 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 many enzyme controlled steps are involved here to get our ATP and energy out of the glucose. Last but not least, let's compare photosynthesis and cellular respiration. As we can see here, and carbon dioxide reacting with water with the help of solar energy gives us glucose and oxygen. This is photosynthesis. The opposite reaction with exactly the same chemical substances will give us cellular respiration. The energy in glucose is now released and we end up with our simple molecules again. Here another depiction. We can see that the carbon dioxide produced by respiration can be used by chloroplasts for photosynthesis. Water is needed, sun energy is needed, the energy of the sun, the light energy is changed into chemical energy stored in glucose, which is built from carbon dioxide and water. Oxygen is produced as a byproduct. Both of these can be used for cellular respiration in mitochondria, which will then produce ATP energy and our simple molecules, carbon dioxide and water again, and the cycle can repeat. All right, let's summarize what we have learned in this short screencast. Cellular respiration is the process in which cells break down glucose, release the stored energy, and use it to make ATP. The process begins in the cytoplasm with glycolysis and is completed in the mitochondria with a citric acid cycle. Some organisms can produce ATP from glucose anaerobically. One way is by fermentation. There are two types of fermentation, lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. Both have biotechnological applications. The products of cellular respiration are needed for photosynthesis and vice versa. Together, the two processes store and release energy in virtually all living things. That's all from me, Alex from Phuket Pulse. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope to see you next time. Have a good day.